know it's all together fitting and proper that everything this morning has gone wrong. Because <laughs> I'm going to preach about when things are tough. <laughs> you got a sense of humor, don't you? I was going through my stuff this week. I have files in there that go back to, you know, when God created the earth. And some days I, I just like to go through them and see stuff that I used to do and preach 40 years ago. And I'd go, man, I, I was really dumb back then. <laughs> anyway, I found some old letters. When we started this church 33 years ago, this little church, not the other churches I've been in, but this one, there was a man, actually, Carol's Uncle Lou. And Uncle Lou was a colorful character. He was 100% USDA choice grade A Southern man. If he couldn't catch it or shoot it or work for it or whatever, he didn't need it. And we started this church, and uh, he was right here helping us out. He lived up in Eustis, so it was a ways away. But he came occasionally. He even filled in the pulpit for me as a lay preacher a couple of times. And he was a storyteller and a character. There's no wonder I gravitated toward him. When I went to seminary, most men that go to seminary have churches and everything back in them. I didn't have anybody. Carol and I were broke, didn't have two nickels to rub together. So old Lou started having spaghetti dinners to raise money for us in seminary. And this is the whole time his wife, of course, was, was suffering and would eventually die from Alzheimer's. And uh, it was a very tragic end because Lorraine was the epitome of, of grace and beauty. And for her to lose that over as, she, as the disease progressed was just a sad, heartbreaking thing. But anyway, Lou was always in good cheer. And he knew that when we started this church, he, we were struggling. So he used to write me letters all the time. Uh, almost one a week or so, they'd show up. And some of them are quite colorful. I can't read them up here. But... Um, <laughs> Anyway, this was dated March 15th, 1993. So we were about six years into this project, 86 to 93. Dear Tom, I was thinking for you, I was thinking about you a lot lately. In fact, the last few days I've had you on my mind and for some reason the Lord won't get your face out of my mind. I'd heard something the other day on the radio that sounded like you. As I best know it, I think it came from Larry Burkett. He said, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, this is all the heaven you are ever going to know. If you do believe in Jesus Christ, then this is all the hell you are ever going to know. <laughs> that sounds like you. If you haven't heard it, go ahead and use it and just say it's yours. <laughs> Okay, Lou. <laughs> I'm out trying to work in my yard today. It's very hot and wet as usual. It is every summer here in Florida. I have a monitor on. I can't, because he was listening to his wife. She's bedridden at this time in a very bad way. I can't help but hear the talk programs that Lorraine watches, just having some noise in the room and something to watch, see. The programs cover every weird behavior, sexual or otherwise, and people just tell anything they want. They're almost proud of their perversions. I can't believe what this world's coming to. The things that are against all decent human behavior are cheered and applauded by the studio audiences. In a few words, in the first paragraph, it is a great comfort to me, so I just keep moving along and try not to hear what's being said on a television and maybe that's why God gave me your face. Just as funny, but a lot nicer. <laughs> we finally were able to, I was finally able to come back to the house this morning. It's Monday, and I was so thankful. Only once did Lorraine fail to make it to the toilet, so I have been greatly blessed of the Lord, and I've praised Him for it today. I don't have any idea what a normal life is anymore. It's now 10.30 p.m. and she's just finished her one hour and 47 minute screaming session. I was able to quiet her with a gentle face massage. Sorry I didn't make it down for your dinner, but tell Carol she's as pretty as a picture and the two boys are handsome and really growing. As ever, Lou. 
P.S. Did you hear that I fell through the porch roof? I was trying to remove some old shingles and it gave way and I dropped and I hit the deck and my portable phone bounced into the lake. Great day after all. Things are normal. <laughs> you would not be, I mean, you would, you'd be surprised how many of these letters I got from Lou of a man trying desperately to care for a wife he loved for decades and decades and decades as she withered from Alzheimer's. In the meantime, he's no spring chicken and eventually he died as well. But he was always an inspiration to me. He was the one that told me many times, and which I've reiterated many times, never ever say, it can't get worse. <laughs> it can always get worse. But I love, I love uh, Uncle Lou. I love the memory of him. I love his service to the Lord. He was a great man of faith. And he was a man that lived by St. Peter. You have for you already a beautiful, beautiful power and kingdom and crown laid up for you. An inheritance which is imperishable and will never fade. Already for each one of you. So live on, even though you're distressed by trials now, or you drop your phone in the lake. Life is far from over. In fact, for the Christian, for the believer, it hasn't even begun. We're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. First, I want you to stand one final time.